With Larry Nassar now sentenced to life in prison for his sexual assault of countless young female athletes under the guise of medical treatment, much of the focus has been on what officials at USA Gymnastics knew or should have known about Nassar's actions. But as William Brangham reports, there are also new questions about what was known at Michigan State University, where Nassar has worked for almost 20 years and where many of his crimes occurred. Larry Nasser joined Michigan State University in 1997. He was already a physician and trainer with USA Gymnastics at the time. As the allegations against him became widely known in 2016, MSU officials claimed initially to have had no prior knowledge of his behavior. But several reports, lawsuits, and victims' testimony allege the university did know of allegations about Nasser for years. In just the past week, the university's president and athletic director have resigned and today, the state's attorney general, Bill Schutte, said he wants all documents, texts, and emails from the university about Larry Nasser. Joining me now to help unpack all of this is Matt Mencarini. He's been covering the Nasser case for a year and a half for the Lansing State Journal in Michigan. Um, Matt, thank you very much for being here. Um, let's just start at the beginning here. In 2016, the Indie Star publishes this big expose alleging it was largely focused on USA Gymnastics and how they had overlooked allegations about Nasser's behavior. The focus was on them at the time. Can you remind us, what did Michigan State University at the time say they knew about his behavior? They said very little uh, initially that they had filed the complaint, a new lawsuit had been, excuse me, they had filed the complaint and a new police report had been filed alleging sexual assaults against him dating back decades. Uh, they then soon fired him several days after the first Indy Star story. And one of the reasons they had fired him uh, was because he did not follow protocols put in place after a 2014 internal Title IX investigation, and he had not told the university that 10 years before that, the Meridian Township Police Department investigated him for a sexual assault allegation. Those were two of the first times that the university acknowledged that they had some um, awareness of sexual assault allegations against him before the Indy Star and before Rachel Den Hollander in the end of 2016. So you mentioned that, that Title IX investigation. I know you've done a good deal of reporting about that. Tell us what that investigation was triggered by, what it looked into, and how the university responded. Uh, in April of 2014, a woman who at the time was a recent graduate reported to a university doctor that during an appointment the month prior, a few weeks prior, uh, that Nasser had sexually assaulted her. That prompted the university to start a Title IX investigation and contact the university's police department to conduct a separate criminal investigation. The university's Title IX investigation concluded about three months later and determined that what Nasser did was not in fact sexual assault, that it was a legitimate medical procedure. They reached that conclusion largely from four medical experts who all worked for the university, all had close ties to Nasser. Um, and then when that wrapped up in July, the police uh, investigation dragged out for another 16 months, during which the university allowed him to see patients before ultimately the Ingham County Prosecuting Attorney's Office declined to charge him in December of 2015. So the people that they consulted to say, were these very physically invasive, now we know of them as sexual assault in essence, they, those people were friends of, of Nasser's or colleagues of Nasser's and they were the ones verifying that this was okay to the university's investigation. Correct, they were colleagues or very good friends, somewhere a mixture of that, had known him for a long time, were familiar with the procedures he performed. A key detail about that 2014 report and investigation is that is one of the few uh, reported to police or in lawsuits without any penetration. Um, and that changes slightly some of the the context that it's in um, and the, the answers and the, the input that those four experts uh, gave to the university about what Nasser said he was doing and what the woman said uh, he did to her. Both of their accounts were pretty similar to each other and so the, the experts were kind of trying to determine if what he was doing uh, could be a medical procedure. Uh, the Title IX investigator determined that based on those conversations with those experts that it was and that this woman misinterpreted uh, what happened to her as sexual assault when in fact it was a, a, a medical procedure. And you and others have reported that, that the, the university put out its Title IX report and it gave that to the, the, the victim herself, but then the university had a separate uh, version that had a lot more detail in it that was somewhat more damning. Can you explain? 
Yeah, that's one of the new revelations from the last couple of weeks. On Friday, I was able to obtain the full uh, Title IX report with the full conclusion section that had much more detail in the university's analysis of, of what happened during that medical appointment. Uh, it had much stronger language. It found significant problems, um, and it found that Nasser's conduct uh, could present patients, could expose patients to unnecessary trauma from perceived uh, sexual misconduct. The report that the woman received had a 41-word conclusion section that just said, um, thank you for bringing your concerns forward. Uh, it's allowed us to look at ways to change policies within the, the medicine, the medical clinic. We know that two senior officials at the university have resigned. We know the state attorney general is now launching an investigation. What is the feeling in the community itself on the university and amongst officials about do they believe the university has done enough, is doing enough, and, and, and what's the sense there? Tone deaf is the word that was, or the phrase that was thrown out a lot leading up to the sentencing hearing, which dragged into two weeks. Uh, that was what was described of the university response. You've seen that start to change as that sentencing hearing um, hit day five and six and seven, um, quickly followed by a couple resignations from uh, the university. Uh, the, the response publicly and in the area, there have been concerns and questions and uneasiness with the way the university has handled um, much of this case since that first report by the Indy Star in September of uh, 2016. All right. Matt Mancarini of the Lansing State Journal, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me.